The paper that, I'm, that I presented to Ivo Musart um, presents the design of a, an interactive art installation, uh, which is called Grammar One, and I realized it for uh, the Open Call Rehumanism in 2019. The installation is designed as a Turing test, uh, and uh, the goal is to, for the audience, is to recognize human made drawing strokes among artificially generated ones. The first part of the paper presents the creative process and the design of the art installation, whereas the second part presents the results of the study consisting of the Turing test, behavior analysis of the audience, and the computational analysis of the stroke selected by the audience. So in 1950, Alan Turing proposed the imitation game, and we all know that uh, it's today commonly known as the Turing test, and it is a way to assess ma uh, machines' ability to emulate human skills. In 2010, Margaret Bolin proposed that, I'm quoting, for an artistic program to pass the Turing test would be for it to produce an artwork which was indistinguishable from one produced by a human being and or was seen as having as much aesthetic value as one produced by a human being. This test might not be accurate enough to evaluate creativity in its complexity. However, the first point uh, proposed by Bolin is sufficient to um, avoid what is called the bias against machine-generated content. So the topic of the bias against machine-generated content uh, was explored since the early age of computer art by artists and scientists um, such as Michael Knoll, for instance, with the Mondrian experiment, until uh, more recently with the Khan exper experiment by Elie Maletol or Rago and Martin, for instance, uh, both used GAN uh, architectures. Um, one interesting study is Chamberlain et al. Um, interesting to me, at least, because it's one of the few that explores this topic using uh, computational drawings. And in, mm, the findings of one of their studies show that uh, the audience judgment was influenced by uh, concepts such as the social engagement or the embodiment of the human gestures. The reason why um, we have chosen drawings is uh, multifold. Uh, first of all, we know that drawings had a special role in shaping the human species from uh, an evolutionary point of view, but also from a cognitive point of view. Uh, whereas on the, for the reason for choosing automatic drawings, um, again, the multifold, but um, most simple is that it's part of my practice. And also because we wanted to explore this uh, in the abstract domain, uh, so to avoid the context and also the conceptual meaning connected to figurative drawings, for instance. Computational drawings, on the other hand, have been used uh, as a form of expression uh, since the early age of computer with uh, uh, artists such as Vera Molnar or Aaron Cohen with Aaron, also with Simon Cotton with the painting Fool, or Patrick Tresset with Paul the Robot, So Gwen Chun with Dark Project, and many more are uh, emerging. Uh, a milestone in sketch synthesis, uh, so we're talking, still talking about computational drawings, uh, was reached with the release of Sketch Online in 2017-18. So this is a variational autoencoder that uses uh, um, the largest data set of uh, sketches at the moment, and uh, this is the architecture that we use to generate our strokes. So the creative process involved in the making of the installation consisted initially to create a set of uh, uh, 300 automatic drawings. Uh, these were created using a tablet that uh, allows to um, draw on paper, uh, uh, using pen and paper, and at the same time saves the file, uh, the drawing as a SVG file. So we use the spatial data of these drawings to model a data set or different data sets. So uh, conceptually, we uh, understood all these drawings as a unique drawing and we use all the individual strokes of this drawing. So we uh, try different splitting strategies and we created different uh, data sets and we train SketchUnion with these different data set using different parameters. Um, the model that produced the uh, best visual results uh, was used to eventually uh, generate um, new strokes, generative strokes. So at the end of this process, we have uh, two data set, one called human strokes, which is a collection of the strokes uh, taken from uh, the original uh, and drawn, uh, human made drawing at, at least, and a second set called artificial strokes, which is a, a collection of generative strokes learned from the uh, human made ones. Second step uh, consists in the making of the installation itself which consists of uh, the display of uh, the 
whole set of 300 automatic drawings uh, in a room. And in the middle of this room, there is an interactive experience, which is accessed via touch screen, and it's built uh, using P5.js. The experience counts six stages. It's a very simple experience. And there are three uh, different Turing tests, basically. The analysis is conducted only on task two, um, which is a matrix of four by four tiles, where the um, image, the stroke, basically, the images are randomly taken from both human and, and artificial sets, and they are distributed in random proportion. The data, uh, so the study was um, conducted in a naturalistic setting, which means this is a, um, a real art installation in a real gallery with real audience. We collected 225 user interactions, which are basically the images selected by the audience and the response time per selection. The piece is presented to the audience as uh, informing both the uh, artistic inquiry and the scientific research with their data, uh, the data collected from the interaction, basically. However, no personal data was collected. So um, to, uh, let's say, optimize the limitations of uh, this setting, we um, conducted additional data quality control steps. Uh, in particular, basically, we um, eliminated some outliers that uh, uh, were possibly uh, different Mm, uh, sorry, um, people uh, playing with the experience in different moments. Then we calculated a performance score, uh, which is a scalar value from zero to one, calculated on the probability of success uh, for each completed trial. And then we uh, conduct an analysis on the strokes, um, particularly on, on using entropy and symmetry. So we calculate the entropy and symmetry of the strokes. On the two main groups, so the human made and artificially generated, but also on the subgroups of selected uh, or not selected by the audience. So in, eventually we end up with uh, four subgroups, which are the human made recognized by the audience, the uh, artificially generated mistaken for human, the human made not recognized and the artificially generated not selected. The last thing we do, we uh, calculate the average response time and we split it in three groups using percentile as 25, 50, 70, 75. So we obtain a fast, medium and slow group. And the results show that uh, in 63.7% of the cases, people were able to recognize the human-made strokes above chance. And then for each of the two classes, so the human-made and the AI-generated, we um, conducted a one-way ANOVA. Um, using the fast, medium, slow group as independent variables, and uh, we measure the performance. And we found a significant effect for time response. In particular, the post-op comparison showed that the difference is significant between the fast and the slow response group. The analysis of the entropy uh, between the two main groups, um, the artificially generated human made, um, didn't show any significant difference for entropy and also uh, among the subgroups. We conducted a similar analysis on the uh, strokes for symmetry, and we, find, we found that uh, there is a significant difference for symmetry between the two main groups, and uh, a significant effect for symmetry um, conducted on the choice, on the audience choice, so therefore on the four groups um, used as independent variables. The postdoc comparison showed that this uh, difference in symmetry is significant only for certain pairs of uh, uh, subgroups. And this really helped us to uh, understand uh, what we were looking at. So in the end, yes, people were able to recognize human-made strokes above chance uh, in the majority of the cases. But we excluded that, for instance, entropy was um, a determinant factor for the um, differentiation strategies. At the beginning, we thought that symmetry was a key factor for the audience choice. However, the deeper analysis of the subgroup pairs, of the difference in symmetry between the, sub, the pairs of uh, subgroups, indicated that symmetry might not be the key factor. On the other hand, the people responding faster performed significantly better, and the results indicated that uh, the differentiation might have happened before the conscious thought because this, um, the fast group reacted on average around 500 milliseconds, or lower than that, actually. So we point to uh, uh, two theories of embodiment, in particular, uh, one called mortal perception hypothesis by Pignocchi, and a second one called embodied simulation by Gallese. And um, so we argue that if the audience embody the human-made strokes as the actions of another human, we ask ourselves if it is possible that generative strokes were processed 
on an unconscious level as non-human, perhaps because non compatible with human gestures. So in the end, the model that we obtain from uh, training sketch nine with our data set and with our settings, of, of course, uh, was partially able to uh, replicate or to learn from the artist's gestures. Uh, and uh, we are actually at the moment conducting further research to explore the very process of drawing and the human, uh, the perception of human made strokes, um, human made drawings at the stroke level, basically. And we think that's, uh, by going in this direction, we can uh, achieve better generative results and uh, on, at the same time, having better generative results can lead to a better understanding of uh, the human drawing overall. Uh, so this is the work. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to uh, take any questions, answer any questions, or to discuss this in another moment. At the bottom of this page, there are my contacts.